the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. There it was, white letters with a red background, staring up at me. You couldn't miss it. There it was on Facebook, shining for all the world to see. Who else is bold enough to say that despite the lockdown, the Lord has been good to me? Who else is bold enough to say that despite the lockdown, the Lord has been good to me? Who else could say this? Could you? Would you? Because this is precisely what's going on behind the scenes in our Gospel reading this morning. In the Gospel reading, Jesus comes upon ten lepers. Now remember, leprosy in Jesus' day was a terrible disease, and anyone who had it was instantly ostracized and had to stand a long way off and warn people to keep away from them. And you think six feet distance is difficult. These lepers cry out for Jesus to have mercy on them. And then Jesus tells them to show themselves to the priest, for only a priest could pronounce someone healed and whole. And it was on their way that they suddenly noticed they were healed. And one of the lepers, seeing that he was healed, turned back praising God with a loud voice. And in a surprising twist to the story, the one who turns back is a Samaritan, a hated foreigner who lives outside the religious practices of the Jews. And yet Jesus holds him up as a symbol of living faith because he returned thanks. But what about the other nine? What happened to them? They're probably doing what Jesus told them to do, to go to the priest to be pronounced healed. So then do they get in trouble for doing what Jesus tells them to do? For even if they don't come back and say thank you? Do they get in trouble? No. Jesus doesn't take the healing back. They don't suddenly show up at the temple and are covered in leprosy again. Jesus doesn't work that way. God doesn't work that way. It's just that one leper returned and gave thanks. Now let's think about that leper. It's important to remember that the lepers were not healed until they started for the priest. As Jesus told the one who returned, your faith has made you well. They didn't just get well by sitting around they acted. They got up their duffs and they did something. So often we sit around and ask God for things and then wait for something to happen and expect God to do all the work. It's, it's like the story of the man who got lost in the woods. He was so frightened and so lost that he eventually got down on his knees and prayed for God to help him. And did God answer your prayer, his friend asked? No, the man replied. Before God had a chance, a forest ranger came and showed me the way out. <laughs> God answers our prayers more then we know, and we need to be willing and aware, aware enough 
to say thank you. Who else is bold enough to say that despite the lockdown, the Lord has been good to me? So here we are, gathered together on a Sunday especially focused on thanksgiving. So how are we at giving thanks? Are we more like the nine lepers or the tenth one who came back to say thank you? We have so much to be thankful for, even in these desperate times. But do we stop to return thanks? Do even on a day or a Sunday that's set aside to give thanks, do we? Do we even give thanks one out of ten times like the lepers? Yes, there's a pandemic. Yes, it prevents us from doing what we want to do. We can't worship all together because it isn't safe. But even in spite of everything going on all around us, we can still say thank you to God for all the many blessings that we have received. Who else is bold enough to say that despite the lockdown, the Lord has been good to me? But like that man in the woods, we seem to be blind to the many blessings that God continues to shower on us. When God gives us the gift of a new day, do we say thank you or take it for granted? When we hear the birds chirping and see the beautiful flowers and the trees, do we give it a moment's thought that God has given us these blessings and given us the sense, the senses to enjoy them? We grumble about having to eat the same old cereal, forgetting that many would gladly eat anything for breakfast. We complain about our jobs or having so much to do, forgetting that many would be grateful just to have a job or even the bodily strength to go to work. We complain about not having enough money, forgetting that we spend more on our entertainment each month than many around the world earn as their annual income. God has blessed us far more than we realize. And the question for us is, how do we respond? How do we give thanks? Who else is bold enough to say that despite the lockdown, the Lord has been good to me? So what are you thankful for? What are the things you want to say thank you to God for? In a few minutes, we will participate in the litany of thanksgiving. And as we do, I invite you to focus on each petition and add things in your heart that you are thankful for. And then say the response like you mean it. God gives us so much, and we say thank you so little. Let us then join in the great thanksgiving that we, as we celebrate the Eucharist and say thank you to God, we will celebrate and give our praise and thanks to the one who gives so much to us. Let us pray. In the words of the hymn, we thank thee then, O Father, for all things bright and good the seed time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. The gifts we have to offer are what thy love imparts, but chiefly 
Thou desirest our humble, thankful hearts. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord, for all his love. Amen.